Okay, so we're back and we're going to do the electric outlets now. And I'm in a brand new scene. What we'll do is we'll just import this into our other scene. So I'm going to make a plane right here to set our um, material on. Right click this and make sure it has no segments. Uh, bring up M for material editor. Click on the little box beside diffuse, bitmap, electric outlet, which is in reference images folder. Open and just drag it on there and click this little checkbox and there we have it and if you want to know the exact measurements just go back to the bitmap and see that it's 409 and 253 so we can write 409 and 253 there you go If you want to see it in this viewport hit F3 and there we go F4 for edges F3 to C all right, so here it is, and um, what we need to do, let me uh, take this back, all right, and hit G. That gets rid of the grid. We could build this a lot of ways, and uh, what I want to do is build this in a way that shows it pretty good. Um, you notice there's a lot of curve in here. This is an American electrical outlet. Um, Feel free to, if you're in another country, model your own. Um, but I'm going to model mine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to model it out of splines. Uh, I could model it using boxes. I could do a bunch of subdivisions to make sure it's all smooth through here. Um, but let's do this out of splines so it will show you another way to model and another way you can get away with not having exactly perfect uh, geometry. And uh, we'll do it. All right, rectangle first. And I'm just going to trace this. All right, and then when we have the rectangle done, we're going to be saying, okay, great. Now we're going to get a line. And I'm just going to click right there, then hold shift down and click there. Right click to end it. And I'm going to shift drag a copy down here. And then shift drag another copy and then yet one more just like so all right now i'm going to select some arcs and i'm going to go to 2.5 snaps and i'm going to snap hold it down snap and let go and then we'll click right there click let go after it snapped there and then pull out and click again so click and hold let it snap bring it and click it, click and hold, let it snap, unclick, and click it again. Alright, so it should look something like this in the viewport. Now, all these are separate entities, alright, each one of these things. So what I want to do is take this spline right here, and I want to attach just this top part, like so. Okay, so now all this is one but it's not really. The vertices from the arc and the lines aren't welded. So hit 1 to bring up your vertices and select that. And you'll see it says two vertices. Go down here to fuse and weld and now it's just one. Okay. Fuse and weld these edges. Now the way we're doing it might be a long way of doing it, um, but it's teaching you as well. So it's going to look good in the end. All right, so do the same thing, fuse and weld. Fuse and weld. Fuse, weld. Fuse and weld. This is another way to make sure that you don't do booleans because booleans will kill your piece too. Um in this way you can it's almost like a boolean without actually having a million edges everywhere that you have to clean up. Now you should clean it, um, but you know, I'm going to convert this rectangle to an editable spline. And then I'm going to attach these pieces right here. Okay, so when I select this, it's all the same spline. So I'll call this Outlet Cover 01, just like that. So now when I select this, I could hit extrude and it might make it all one flat piece. It might make some kind of weird thing happen. 
If it makes some kind of weird thing happen, you can also do a face extrude like that. That does the same thing. Um, and then on top of it, you can put an edit mesh modifier. Um, since the extrude worked for me, I'm going to use that and just give it a little bit. Not much. We'll just say six like that. Hit F4 to bring up your edges and you'll see that um, it's a clean mesh so far. Now what I'm going to do on top of this is go to Edit Poly. And Edit Poly will let me do things to this that I could if it were like a box. Alright, now it does create this insanity, these lines. Don't mess with them. They really won't do much damage to you if you just know what you're doing. I'm going to click this back and I'm just going to delete it because we really don't need the thing. Alright? So the next thing I'm going to do is take the outline of it, the back, and I'm going to scale it up. Just like that. And now we have that. If you want to chamfer this edge around here, you can. If you have F4, you can see that's a little sharp. If you want to chamfer it, you can. Um, you know, it doesn't matter to me. And if you want to, I can show you. It's not really hard. It may mess with your mesh because this is connected here. It may not. But I can show you a way around it. Let's see, so we'll hit chamfer, just like that, and hit OK, just default will be fine, and hit F4, and you see that it is now chamfered, and it looks pretty decent. And you say, okay, well, what about those edges? Is it going to make the render look bad? Well, if I hit render, it shows up, and there's no crazy shadowing. Um, it's all nice. So this is another way of getting really nice smoothness without booleans and let it keep, uh, you know, let you keep going without having to fix a bunch of stuff. Should you? Mm, probably. But um, for this case, it works. And I have done this before for uh, an interior client work. Uh, first work I ever did, actually. I did it this way. And uh, it worked. And they had, didn't have a problem with it. And... That's the motto. If it works, it's right. And uh, if the camera has no problem with it, then you have no problem with it. So the camera has no problem with this. The render has no problem with this. And that's one. All right, so the electric outlet's done. We could model the hole for the screw, but we'll just model the screw. You know, that's nothing. All right, so let's go back down to editable spline. Now, it's going to pop up this warning. Don't check this. You want to see this warning. You're going to hit hold and yes because you want it to hold the stack above it and so you can come back to it. All right, are you sure you want to continue? Hold it, yes. All right, and with that, I'm going to take this spline right here and I'm going to, just like before with our um, walls when we did the trim work, we're going to make a copy and then detach it and we'll just leave it called shape one, that's fine. All right, so now we can go back up to edit poly and that's still there just the way it was. All right. Now we can hit H and let us sit here and wait a minute and grab our shape. All right, so now our shape is selected. Take off my snaps and I'll just pull it out a little bit so I can see it. And we'll hit Control H on this so we can see through it. So now I have that. I'm going to go into this, and I want to scale it down to match that a little bit. We don't have to bring it all the way in, but just enough. And before we do that, let's center our pivot. Just bring it in a little bit like that. All right, good. Now the same thing applies. We're going to create this insanity inside here. We'll take a line, click, and then hold down Shift and drag to about, I don't know, right here is good. And then we'll shift and come down to here. Shift, come down to here and click. And right click to end it. Hit S to bring up your snaps. Arc. Click and hold. Let it snap. Let go. Pull it out a little bit. 
and click. And now we have that. So I'm going to take the previous spline, attach that, hit 1, and now I'm going to fuse and weld these corners. Fuse and weld. And now we have it. So we have that little piece right there. I'm going to take this, all right, and hold down shift and make a copy of it. And before I do that, let's uh, bring up angle snaps so I can do it to 90 degrees. Hit OK. Move it down here and take snaps off. Move it down here. All right, and scale it down to fit. A little more. Like that. Good. And then I'm going to take this plane again and I'm going to shift another copy 180 degrees this way and just bring it over like so. All right. Now this should work. Problem being is you see that they're not exactly in the same spot as they once were. So I'm just going to grab them and bring them out. And that's what I get for moving the shape, but it's fine. I'm just going to bring it and line it up with these, just like that. No big deal. All right, now with this editable spline, I'm going to attach this one, this one, and this one. Now we'll see if extrude modifier will work on it. Extrude and it does. Okay, and if it doesn't, go through the face extrude like I said before and then put an editable poly on top of that. Alright, good. So now I want to basically do the same exact thing. I want to add an edit poly modifier on top of this. It's going to do that craziness. I'm going to select the back of it and delete it because we no longer need it. Now, another thing that I'm going to do is bevel it. Now, we could bevel it or we could do some other things to it but first let's take this and this on the inside and let's see here see if we can uh, nah okay we'll do it separately I'm gonna take this right I'm gonna come here and I am going to scale it down I move it down some like this and then scale it in like this and move it over just like that hit one so I can get the vertices and now I'll scale those flat just like that bingo <clears throat> I'm going to take this I'm going to do the same thing. Go back here so I can see what I'm doing. If you want to see your edges while you work, just F4. Okay. Bring it in like this. Okay, select all of these. Line them out a good bit, and bring it in. And they have that. And if it looks a little off, just match it with this side right here. picture's a little off anyway, so. Alright, so we have that. And I'm going to control click that one. And I'm just going to bring them back a little bit, like so. Just like that. Hit F4 so we can see it. And it seems pretty good. All right, good. So now we have that. And the smoothness is nice as well. 
Okay. Um, let's take the cap and do that. And we'll do something similar. We'll just uh, scale it in a little bit. Bring it down. And then we have that. Okay. Hit F4 and you'll notice that it looks like it's supposed to. Might be a little sharp around the edges. If you don't like that, you can chamfer it. You'll just have to go around the whole thing. I'm going to hit Control S to save just before I, uh, oops. I'm not going to do that. I think I hit the wrong button. Yeah, I don't know why I got that crazy color. It's pretty awesome, actually. Uh, looks like I've got some kind of thing going. Anyway, I don't know. It's like soft selections on, but it isn't. Oops. Let's select this. Go back to the edges, and soft selection is on. Okay. Let's hit the... Uh, hot key for it or something by accident. You could try to hit loop for this, but it's not going to work. Okay. And then you can go back up here. Make sure I select that. Back up here and do a chamfer of this. 0.5 is good. And there you go. That way it's not so hard edged. And you can do the same thing over here. And see, it is some work, and you could have done it a buttload of ways. Um, but you know, I mean, this is fine too. So 0.5. You're saying, I want to do it to this too, but there's this crazy edge. Will it work? It might. Here's a way you can do it too. You can select this, do ring, okay, do a connect of one, kind of slide it towards the, kind of slide it towards the front of it, hit OK, and then just scale it down. And what that does is kind of creates a bevel look of its own right there. Of course, you need to fix the back as well, but, you know, it totally works, but I'm not going to do it that way. Okay, so do we want to chamfer this around? I just don't want to click all that, but you get the idea, and I might do that off camera, finish chamfering it. So let's uh, click this, control or, or uh, Alt X so you can see through it. And then I'll just slide this back into its place. There we go. I'll scale it up a little bit. There we are. And an American electric outlet. Can name this outlet um, top plug 01 and then shift drag one down and call it bottom plug 01 and you see that the distance of these two is off actually so if you want to you can get away with it it's not going to be that big of a visual difference point nothing and just put that in there. And you'll notice too that the picture of this thing is quite odd as well. So there's that. And now we have an electric outlet. Does it render even with all this craziness? Yeah. It renders fine. Okay. So there's an electric outlet. If you want to put a screw here, you can do that easily. Um, 
or uh, Alt X so I can see through it. Um, I mean, you can use a sphere, or you can use a cylinder if you want to. Um, I'll just show you using a cylinder really quick. This is pretty much nothing that's going to be seen up close anyway. We'll take down the height segments and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll leave it at 18. Why not? And uh, right click it, convert it to an editable poly. I'll get rid of this back polygon because it'll never be seen. Um, you know, uh, I can select this and control select the edges, chamfer it, uh, click OK. Um, I can ring select this, control select the polygons and come down and give it a decent smoothing group. Um, select this and take the smoothing group off. Um, so I have something like that. It's not too noticeable that it has jagged edges. Make it as smooth as you want to. If you're going to have a close up, make it detailed. Connect. You know, connect. And uh, we got something like that now. Um, you know, I guess we could um, delete this. You know, delete it. And then. Um, you can tell I'm just going really quick here. Just bridge that. You know, I guess you want to. And then you can just cap this side and cap this side. And now you got a screw. Pretty easy. And just put it into place. Like so. And you have an outlet. And there it is. Electric outlet. We'll take it. We will group it, group, call it outlet group underscore 01, hit OK, save your file as electric outlet, and um, that'll be good. So save as electric outlet, and you're good to go. So I will see you in the next vid where we do a light switch.